Hello everybody. So this is going to be a lesson in Sonic Pi about how we can start making sounds, which is going to be the very basic uh, commands that we can use as the building blocks of starting to make music. Okay, so from last video, we know that this is the text editor in Sonic Pi. So we're going to be typing commands that are going to be read by the computer and help make music, okay? Uh, so from the last video, I'll just show you this again. I can't just write anything in the text editor. So if I write hello and I try and run it, then I get an error message because it doesn't understand that. So there are certain commands or things called functions in Sonic Pi uh, and in computer programming in general that you need to use. Uh, and there's certain ways you need to write these things. So that's called syntax, which is kind of like grammar. When you think about any kind of language, there's certain ways you need to write things. The only difference is that you can have incorrect grammar and still be understood by people. But computers and syntax, if you don't have the correct syntax, they m will not always run. They may just give you an error. So they're expecting things to be very specific. And that can be frustrating sometimes. It might be something as little as like a space or a capital letter where it should be uh, a lowercase. So very seemingly simple things could wind up uh, giving you error messages. So you need to be very clear that you're doing things exactly the way that I'm showing you. You can't leave anything out and think that it's going to be okay. All right. So uh, the first command that we are going to use is this command called play. So this is with a lowercase letter. All these are going to start with a lowercase. So I'm going to write P-L-A-Y. And then you see auto completes. There's some other stuff there as well. I don't necessarily recommend right now just trying to click whatever comes up because there's additional things that go with it and it might not work. Okay, so I'm going to write play. All right, and now there is a space that I need to put. Now, play is a function, and a function is basically a command in Sonic Pi. It makes it do something. Now, a lot of functions take something called an argument or a parameter. Okay, that basically means play, you need to give it something so it knows what to do. And in this case, the thing we need to give it is a note or a number. All right, so I am going to give it a number. I'm going to write the number 60. Okay, so I have my function called play, and then I have my argument, which is 60. Note there is a space between them, and you have to have that space. You can't do that. Notice that the 60 changes color, so I want my 60 to be blue. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to press run and see what happens. And you hear a beep. Okay, so we have now created our first program in Sonic Pi, which is Play 60, just to make a simple beep. And you look over here in the log, it kind of tells it what happens, it ran it, it gives us the synth sound we use, we'll talk about that more in another video, and then the note I played was 60. Okay, just to quickly point out up here, you notice I have my aim, uh, which didn't cause an error message. Uh, so I have in front of it a hashtag, and a hashtag does what's called commenting out your code. So if I were to move that and then press run, suddenly I get this error message talking about line one, which is where I have this going on here. So now it's a problem. But if I have a hashtag, it basically hides this from the program. So it's not going to take this into consideration when it runs. I could do the same thing with play. I just put a hashtag in front of that. See, that turns gray, and then I run it and I don't hear a sound, but I don't get an error message because now it's not seeing anything to run. Okay, so that's not something you really need to worry about right now, but in, just in case you're wondering why this isn't calling. So I go back and run it again, boom, I have play. So again, the 60 represents a number or a note. Now, if I want to say make the number higher, maybe I do 66. Okay, it sounds a little higher, I could do 70. I could do 80, I could do 82. So you can kind of hear the notes get higher and higher and higher. Now there's a certain amount, like if I were to do like 2000, we don't hear anything. Now it's not because 2000 isn't a number or 
uh, won't work. It's just that this is now creating notes that are too high for us to hear. So there's a thir certain threshold. Uh, I believe it's around like 131 or something. I'm not going to play it because really high pitches start to bother your ears. You're more than welcome to try it out. But I believe it's somewhere around 130, 140. It's going to be really, really high. So do it at your own risk. Uh, but, you know, I could do like 110. See, that even gets a little high pitched. Uh, so just be wary of that. And then instead, if I go low, I could do like 50. I get a lower sound, 40, lower, you know, like 35. And then again, but if I do like three, I get a t kind of a sound, but not anything I can really hear. This again is getting kind of on the lower end of what we are able to hear as people. So I did like one, I get that little blip, but not really a sound. Now if I do like negative one, I'm going to get an error message because it has to be greater than zero. Okay, So you can experiment with the different numbers and what kind of pitches you get. Now if you know about musical notes, we can give play the argument of a musical note as well. So like A, B, B flat, F sharp, we can do that in Sonic Pi as well. The first thing we need to do though, if we want to do that, is we need to put a colon. All right, so we put a colon and then let's pick the note A. And then we also need to add a number with that. Now that number is gonna dictate how high or how low this note A is. So I'm gonna do A4, okay? So to do a musical note, I do the colon, then I do the name of the note. So musical notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then I do the what's called the octave or basically how high or how low. So I run it and I get a note. Okay, I can run it to A5, it becomes 81, I could do A6, okay, and it tells me over here what note it is, so like 93 is the same as A6, so just to show you if I type 93, it gives me the same note as when I had A6, okay. All right, I could go down to like A3, it gives me that, that's the note 57. Now let's say I want to do A sharp. So with A sharp, I'm not going to do the sharp sign because we already know that that sharp sign is going to comment out. So that's why the three turned gray. So instead you're going to do S, S for sharp. So A sharp three, I'm going to run that. And note this time it's 58, which is one higher than 57. Now if I want to do flats, let's say I do, uh, I don't know, D flat. I could do D. Here I can use the lowercase b, which looks like the flat sign, and that will work as a flat, okay? Instead of if I did just D3, you see there it went from 49 to 50, okay? So I could do that, or I could do F, which stands for flat as well. So D flat three, right? And then it does 49 again. So you can use musical notes as well. So if you're comfortable with that, you can play around with that. Just remember to use these notes as well uh, to change how high or how low those notes might be. I'm gonna go back to numbers just for everybody's sake. I feel like numbers are a little easier to understand if you don't know musical notes, okay? so. Uh, that is the play function. I'm going to stop the video here and in the next video I will get to this next part which is sleep, but I don't want to make this video run too long. So play around, just with the play function, some notes, some numbers, see what the sound has, play around with uh, maybe a couple plays together and see what happens. It may not be what you expected and I'll cover that in the next video.